Good morning, church. We're glad you're joining us today. Don't forget we're doing communion this morning. Have your bread and cup ready. Good morning. We also have a few more announcements about church and how we'll continue in the future. Um, these came from Bishop Palmer. The earliest we could be back in church is May 24th. Um, things could change yet, but as of now, that's the earliest we could be back. Um, so keep expecting these video services until then. And when we return, there will be some changes. Um, of course, the social distancing, masks, and the way we sanitize and clean everything. We'll have to make some changes there. But there are also some changes that will be specific to churches and how we do things. Um, we will be making a video and sending that out once we get closer to returning to church. So look for that coming shortly. Thanks. Good morning. Join me in prayer. O oh God of um, grace and glory, we come to you this morning to worship you. We meet together as one body in Christ in our many different locations. And Father, we can't wait till that day when we can all be together to worship you um, in one building. But we know that you are with each individual. We know that you are, are sitting beside us. And, and Father, we pray that as we sing out your praises this morning, that it brings you great joy, that you are um, just filled with awe of how much we love you. Father, we ask for the Holy Spirit to have his way with us this morning. Amen. Join us as we sing our praise and worship to the Lord. I thought faith was only for the sad and weak Meant for someone else but not for me Evil all around me That's the way it seemed I would always fail in my own schemes And then I felt His grace Now I'm a believer not a trace of doubt in my mind Here I've been saved I'm a believer, couldn't be sure if I tried Now I know salvation is a given thing With Christ's blood my future has been bought Now I'm living for Him he bore all the pain I'll get to heaven cause of him Yes, I felt his grace Now I'm a believer Not a trace Of doubt in my mind Now I've been saved I'm a believer Couldn't be sure if I tried Evil was upon me, that's the way it seemed I would always fail in my own schemes Then I felt His grace, now I'm a believer Not a trace of doubt in my mind now I've been saved I'm a believer, couldn't be sure if I tried Yes, I felt His grace Now I'm a believer Not a trace of doubt in my mind Yes, I'm a believer Oh, I'm a believer I'm a believer Oh, there is a 
flower in the seed and apple tree in cocoons a hidden promise butterflies will soon be free in the cold and snow of winter there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until it's season something god alone can see there's a song in every silence seeking word and melody there's a dawn in every darkness bringing hope to you and me from the past will come the future what it holds a mystery unrevealed until its season something god alone can see in the end is our beginning in our time infinity in our doubt there is believing in our life eternity in our death a resurrection at the last a victory unrevealed until its season something god alone can see Good morning, Grace and Walnut Grove Church. This morning, we're going to have a little talk quick about faith. Girls, do you know what faith is? Yes. yes. What is it? When you trust, trust someone. And believe. Okay, so probably an example, like say I call and I call your house and I say, okay, I'm going to come pick you up in 20 minutes. Do you believe I'm going to come or will I not come? Yes. yes. And why do you believe I'll come? Because we trust you and believe that you will come. Okay, well, another example. Say it's dinner time and you're hungry. Is mom and dad going to get you something to eat? Yes. Why, why are they going to get you something to eat? Because they love us. And, they tr and you trust them to do feed you? Yeah. Okay. okay. So who is it that we can't see that we should have faith in? Jesus and God. Yes, we can't see Jesus or God, but we always know that they're 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 there for us. And how do we talk how do we talk to Jesus and God? We pray. So you have faith that they'll answer your prayers, right? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna read Hebrews eleven verses one and six. Who reads first? You read first. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for. And certain of what we do not see, he, he is, it, it's impo it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe in that God exists and that he, 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 he rewards those who sincerely seek him. And we want to say we you, all of us, thank you for listening and to keep faith in God to get us through all the trials and tribulations that we're currently going through. We love you. We, we love, love you. you. Thank you. And goodbye. This is a time where we share with each other um, the things that we celebrate in life and the things that we need a little extra prayer for. Grace and Walnut Grove, our churches that pray for one another, keep each other in, um, in their forefront and desire the best for each one. We are families. We are a family in Christ and we are family together. I have received some prayer requests 
through the week, and I wanted to uh, inform you that Aaron Aaron has um, when that's granddaughter has received had completed her first round of chemo. The doctor said she could continue on or she could stop. It was all depending on how she felt. And she feels so good that she decided to go right into the second round. So we praise God for what he is doing in Aaron, and we uh, ask him to continue doing his work. We pray for Ashley's family, Teresa and Wayne's daughter. Um, three of her children have been sick, and so we lift them up in prayer and um, for a healing touch on them. I ask you to pray for my mom. She had been going through some very confusing times. She had a medical condition that caused extra confusion, and we're trying to get that under control. And, and then that call that you get from the uh, assisted living facility when they, 7 o'clock in the morning, and your mother has fallen. And she fell the other day. She has no broken bones. She has abrasions on her elbows and her knees. So not too, not too bad. But um, before I came in today, she called and, and just says she is so confused. And so I just ask you to pray for my mom. She will turn 92 in June, and she has always done so well that it's just, you know, those of you have gone through that know how difficult that is. I pray that we, or I ask you to lift up in prayer the teachers. I didn't realize what all they were still going through until I sat with my grandson going through his schoolwork. The teachers are still putting together their assignments. They're still receiving the assignments, and they're still grading the assignments, and then they're still putting them in the grade book. They're doing all the things they did before, but in a completely different way. And if you have ever um, been in your same chair at your same desk or at your same machine, and all of a sudden everything you do there is completely different, it's almost better just to walk away and do something completely different. But, but they're hanging in there, and, and um, it cannot be easy to do everything in a brand new way. So we pray for their strength and for um, just confidence that they know what they're doing and the kids are getting a lot out of what they're putting into it. And I wanna lift up Jonathan Burke and I pray that you do also. He is the principal, he's in our congregation at um, Grace and he's the principal at the high school. And um, when I saw him on Facebook the other day. I just thought of all the decisions that he has to make and no matter what he decides or what he puts into place, not everybody's going to be happy. And so I, I ask you to pray for him and the decisions that he has to make. We pray for Jacob Westerfield. He is he has reported to duty at Lackland Air Force Base in Texas. Keep him in your prayers. I'm going to lift up friends of ours, Larry and Sue from Ottawa, and Larry uh, had been sick last week and is doing better, and I just ask you, um, pray for Larry and his caregiving wife, Sue. Pray for our law enforcement. We continue to lift up the sheriff's office, the police departments, the um, all, of, all of those um, individuals who, you know, right now, wherever you are, do you know somebody's assigned to you to take care of you? Do you know that if you call and said, I need help, there is somebody already assigned to you? I just find that so comforting. On top of our Lord and Savior assigned to each one of us, he also has his law enforcement. And I think that it is a calling that they do what they do because you wouldn't do it any other way. So we ask you to pray for their safety and for their well-being. We pray for all essential workers. We pray for the firemen, the fire department. We pray for our city workers, for um, the nurses, the doctors. We pray for those who have gone to work and wondered, am I really essential? But their work called them in and they had to go. We pray for our workers at Pantry Pride and Kroger and Dollar General and all of them who have been there to, um, to supply what we need and have been there through this whole uh, pandemic. So we ask you to lift them in your prayers. We pray for Wayne and Becky. Um, Wayne has gone through quite a time here recently, feeling better on the mend, and we pray for continued healing, also for Becky. Our joys, um, Judy's granddaughter, Lexi, graduated from Ball State. Yay, Lexi! The sad thing is her graduation would have been yesterday and the ceremony and 
that's not ha that did not happen. But um, she did get together with some immediate family and had a party. But congratulations to Lexi, as well as Allie Janidas. She graduated from the Ohio State University. And um, we congratulate her on that and also for a position that she has gotten in already as a teacher. So um, congratulations to the two of them and all of you who are listening who have graduated and no one gets to um, come spend the day with you and congratulate you. You are not forgotten. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Before I, before I start, um, there's many concerns with the COVID-19 pandemic. And there are concerns that because we're not together weekly, we can't always share. But there's little problems that come and there's big problems that come. And I think we should pray for God to open our minds to how we can be available to people. And I know many of you have done that already and have been available in many different ways. But that's, that's what we'll pray for this morning. Join me in prayer. Oh, God of grace and glory, God of mercy and comfort and peace, we cry out to you because you are our God. You are the one who gets us through these times. You are the one we depend upon. You are the one who never leaves us. You are the God who loves us no matter what else is going on. And sometimes, like now, with what we're going through, we have to wonder how we can have any peace at all. We know that it comes through you and your love for us and your desire for all things to work out for the good for those who love you. Father, you heard our prayers this morning. You have so many in need of a physical healing touch. So many in need of a spiritual touch. Many needing to know that you are there through their situation and whatever has come their way. Father, we pray that they feel your comfort and your protection over them. And that no matter what what they may be going through or what they may be thinking, they can know without a doubt that you are there. They feel your presence. And they know it in such a way that they feel compelled to tell others. I know the only way I got through COVID-19 was through the love of God. You do those things for us. May we never forget that. May we never take it for granted. The comfort that you provide. Father, we, we give our country to you. We pray for our president. We pray for our governor. We pray for those who are making decisions locally. No one has gone through this before. Nobody knows what the future brings. No one knows how we will come out of this except you. So help us to put our trust in you, our faith in you. Help us to place our worry in your hands so that, Father, we are free to live the life you have asked us and called us to live so that we are not consumed by the worries of the world, but we are consumed with the worries that Jesus carries. And that is how do we take care of each other? That that becomes our focus. How can I take care of my neighbor? How can I take care of people I don't know? How can I take care of others? How can you use me, God? I am open to your calling. And, oh, God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, the cross, the cross, him going to the cross to save us from our sins, to save us for life everlasting, the promise of life eternal. 
and not just any old life, just not a life that we're used to living here or our best days or our worst days, or but a life that is filled with worshiping you. A life that is not boring, a life that is not, um, that is that is just filled with joy and compassion and a life with no more tears and no more sorrow and no more pain and no more viruses. Thank you for your promises and thank you for Jesus Christ. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. Scripture today is from Romans 8, 31b through 39. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. May God add his blessing to this reading. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth that we find in it. And we ask that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we understand your message this morning. Amen. So I read an interesting article by a college student named Nay Bailey. I want to share the beginning of that assignment with you to start my sermon or my message this morning. This is what Nay wrote. I poured myself a glass of ice cold lemonade, sharpened a pencil and pulled out my Bible, eager to begin my assignment. Earlier in the day, the professor for my summer school Bible course had instructed us, bring back to the class a report on everything the book of Romans has to say about faith. Sounded like an easy assignment, one that wouldn't take me long, but I was in for a surprise. I soon discovered that the word faith appears numerous times in Romans and that my study would take longer than I thought. As I read what Romans had to say about faith, I found myself asking, faith is probably the most important thing in my life, but how do I define it? What is it? My mind flashed back eight years when I first joined the Christian organization, Campus Crusade, Campus Crusade for Christ. Back then, I didn't understand a walk of faith. I've come so far in my understanding, I thought. But even with all that I've learned about faith, I realized that I still couldn't define it. I knew that the Bible made hundreds of references to faith, such as the just shall live by faith. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. But I was surprised that I couldn't come up with a single or a simple personalized definition of the word. I had never completed the statement, for me, my faith is. Mr. Bailey is right. The word faith shows up numerous times in the book of Romans. We read things like obedience comes through faith. 
The righteous will live by faith. The righteousness from God comes through faith. A person is justified by faith. Faith is credited as righteousness. For if those who live by law are heirs, faith has no value and the promise is worthless. The promise comes by faith. The word of faith we are proclaiming. Faith comes from hearing the message. We stand by faith. Let him use his talents in proportion to his faith. Everything that does not come from faith is sin. I kind of felt bad for this young student, especially as I began my own study of Romans and what the author, um, Apostle Paul, said about faith. I realized as I read through the book of Romans once again that faith can certainly be overwhelming. You know, we tend to toss that word around and toss around faith like everybody understands what we're talking about. Everybody's on the same page when it comes to faith. Here's an example of what I mean. The other day as I was scrolling through Facebook, I found a meme that said, a meme, for those of you who don't know what a meme is, because I think I was one of the last maybe to learn, so you probably all know, but um, a meme is, we used to call like a quote or a saying, but it was a meme on Facebook, and it said, God can restore what is broken and change it into something amazing. All you need is faith. God can change what is broken. He can restore what is broken and change it into something amazing. All you need is faith. Sounds simple. God can restore anything that is broken. And he can make it into something amazing. All you need is faith. But faith can't just be faith. I mean, you have to have faith in something or someone. Is it faith that brokenness will get better as long as I have good positive vibes? Is my faith in how I react to something? Is my faith in how I respond, how I, how I think through the problem? Is my faith in time, the time heals all wounds? Faith is simple, yet so very complicated. I talked to last week that we all have faith in something. Faith, we sometimes have faith in our own reasoning, or some people have faith in their own reasoning. They have faith in their, um, in their own abilities. Faith in the connections they've made along the way. Faith in family and friends and a spouse. For some, their faith is more like, if anything bad can happen, it'll happen to me. And they hold on to that faith like it's their job. The meme that I spoke of is referring to having faith in God. And that's not a simple statement either. Do we simply need to have faith that A, God exists somewhere? Do we need to have faith that God will come to our rescue and immediately repair what is broken each and every time? Is faith in God something I do in my mind? Like I talk myself into it. You know, God will fix this. I, I have faith. I have faith. I have faith in God. Can I say it enough times that I will finally believe it? Or even if I don't believe it, if I say it in my mind, will it come true? In my attempt to simplify the meaning of faith, I'm afraid that I made it more complicated. So the dictionary... We go to the simplification of the dictionary, and we see it defined this way. Faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Sounds reasonable. But you know how in the after the uh, description, they then put a, use it in a sentence? 
listen to the sentence that was used. For example, this restores one's faith in politicians. That's a risky sentence right there. The second definition, of course, I like much better. It says a strong belief in God. But I believe what most of us want to know is not so much exactly what Paul was saying about righteousness and justification and saved and, and, and the, the, the words that he put together in Romans. I think what most of us want to know is how faith plays out in our lives. How does my faith translate into something concrete in my life? How does it affect me at home, at work, at church, at wherever I am? How does faith affect my life? What does it actually mean to have faith in God? So in other words, how do I understand my faith? As Nay ba Bailey's professor challenged Tim, I challenge you to answer the statement, to complete the statement. For me, faith is Have you ever thought of exploring that, defining it, making it personal? We need to ask ourselves, how can I move from faith being something that I, that I struggle to understand in my mind to something that enters my heart and affects the way I live? Well, number one, the way to do that, number one way to do that is to build a relationship with the one in whom we place our faith. If you're going to put your faith in a politician, God love you, but if you're going to put your faith in a politician, chances are you're going to find out everything you can about him or her. If you're going to put your faith in a hairdresser, you're going to, you're going to find out all you can about him or her. At least that's what us women do. I think men just show up at a place that's open and has scissors and they do their thing. But for us women, don't we normally like look around? What do we, what hairstyle do we like? We look for somebody to have a, a, a something we want and then we ask them who does their hair. I mean, we, we take time. We, we, um, we look into it. We check into it. We get to know what we're getting ourselves into before we get ourselves into it. And we should do the same with God. We should do the same with our relationship with him. Because the truth of the matter is, our faith is only as good as the option in which we place it. This past week, I personally explored that question. For me, faith is. And I'll be honest with you, I read Romans, and I thought I was going to do a sermon explaining what faith in Romans meant. But it got complicated. And I just felt that in this difficult time, we need to break it down. We need to understand what faith means personally to us. And so I looked and, and I wondered if it'd be okay if I shared what I found out in my explorations this week. And I know you're asking yourself, what if I say no? Will she continue on? Yes, I will. So let me share with you what I found. For me, faith is knowing something greater than myself is in control. I don't have to know everything. I don't have to make all the decisions on my own. I don't have to figure out what tomorrow is going to be like. I don't have to wake up in the morning and have everything perfectly in place. I don't have to worry if the grass will grow, the flowers will smell pretty. I don't have to worry about if, they're, if, if the sun is going to revolve around the earth. And I don't have to worry about being loved 
and about my children being taken care of. Because there's someone bigger in charge. Faith for me is knowing that no matter what lies in my future, God will see me through. And you learn this by trusting in the Lord more and more all the time. In my beginning walk, and perhaps you can say the same thing, in my beginning walk with Christ, I didn't have complete faith in him. I held on to all my problems and thought I had to solve them on my own. Or maybe you've done this like I have. I've prayed to God and told him how he could fix what was wrong. It wasn't until I said, I can't do this. I need you. And I gave it to him. And then I saw him work through it in ways that I couldn't have even seen happen. It's through doing that over and over again. I mean, we have a tendency to give things to God and then pull them back. But it's when we give them up, leave them with him, and see him work through it, that we develop that true faith. Faith for me is knowing that I am loved by the creator of all things. The powerful Lord loves me personally. He doesn't look down at the town of St. Mary's and say, they're doing pretty good there. I like them. I love them, actually. He looks at me personally. He looks at you personally. And he promises us all through the Bible that he loves us and that his love will never fail. And we even read that he lavishes his love on us. One of my favorite scriptures about God, that he lavishes his love on us. And I believe in that promise. And I believe in the promises that he will never leave me. I believe in the promise that he will walk by me always. And I believe in the promise that he will send the Holy Spirit or that he has sent the Holy Spirit to live in me, that Holy Spirit that gives us comfort and direction. For me, faith is knowing God will equip me for whatever he calls me to. We're always frightened when we think that we're being called into something, but I don't know how. Remember Moses, but I'm, I'm poor of speech. I don't know, I can't. And look what he did with Moses. We underestimate our own talents, or, or maybe we don't underestimate them because we don't have the talent it takes, but God does. And so we say, okay, God, if you want me to do this, I gotta rely on you. And that's another time that your trust just builds. He, he did it. I couldn't have done it. He did it. Faith for me is having peace in my heart. Peace when everything around me is anything but peace. I've shared with some of you before the um, day of my first husband's funeral. Horrible day, as you can imagine. 42 years old, died suddenly. I was 39, sat with, sitting with my 14 and my 10-year-old daughters in the church and we stood up one of the songs I had chosen um, to sing at the funeral was I need thee every hour and as I opened my hymn book to sing a peace washed over me and what had been up to that point the worst moment of my life I had peace that comes from God, and it is that peace that passes, surpasses all understanding. You know what faith to me boils down to is complete surrender and trust in God. I trust in who God is. I trust in his promises, and I certainly trust in his word and the truth that is written in it. It's not about having faith in our faith. It's about having faith in a God who is worthy of our faith. 
know, Paul wrote the book of Romans as an organized and carefully presented statement of faith. His words are theologically sound. My words are much simpler than Paul's. My words are life. Sound. <laughs> Life-based. And I truly hope my words and my definition of faith give you the courage to explore your faith. My faith is. I hope my words caused you to examine who God is through the daily reading of his word. Nothing takes the place of reading his word. I want to build a relationship with God. How do I do that? You read his word. I want to become more like Jesus. How do I do that? You read his word. I want to be a better Christian. I want to, I want to learn how to give to people sacrificially. You read his word. I want to have a life filled with peace. You read his word. There's no 10 steps. There's one. You read his word. I want you to keep this in mind. We don't need a great big faith. We need faith in a great big God. Amen. Join me in Holy Communion this morning. We are able to take it at our own house. And even though it's not the best way of doing it, it is very um, much still Holy Communion, and it is taking in the body and blood of Christ. And so um, I hope you have your elements ready and we can go get started. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took, a, your, took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead the same Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory, and poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Eat this as often as you will in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, drink, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink, and each time you do, do it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered in our own places, but as one, and on these gifts that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this wine, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at your table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And so I invite you now to take and eat in remembrance of him. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, 
given for you for your, the forgiveness of your sins. There is peace in Christ when we learn of Him Feel the love He felt for us when He bore our sin Listen to His words, let them come alive If we know Him as He is, there is peace in Christ He gives us hope when hope is gone He gives us strength When we can't go on He gives us shelter In the storms of life When there's no peace on earth There is peace in Christ There is peace in Christ when we walk with Him Through the streets of Galilee to Jerusalem And the broken hearts dry the tear-filled eyes When we live the way He lived, there is peace in Christ He gives us hope when hope is gone He gives us strength When we can't go on He gives us shelter In the storms of life When there's no peace on earth There is peace in Christ When there's no peace on earth, there is peace in Christ. I pray as you had your communion this morning that it made you think more about faith. Faith in the promise of Jesus Christ and who he is and what he did for us. And I pray that this week you go through in your mind and in the word what faith means to you. a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah my weapon is Fight 
of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. 